Hi everybody, it's Joni Young here. Welcome back to my channel for another tutorial in acrylics. Today I've got something really wild and different for you guys. I've done a few of these in the past, but I've never shared them um, in a video with anybody else before. So this is the first time I'm showing you all what I do with my dried paint palettes or they're also referred to as paint skins. So I just want to show you the canvas that I'm working on today before I show you my dried paint palette. I've got an 11 by 14 um, stretched and primed canvas. This has been primed with gesso. And I have uh, another canvas here with the plastic on it already. And this is what I use sometimes to uh, as a paint palette. So it's waterproof and it actually works really, really well. Once I get it all covered with paint, um, I peel it off and I can use it sometimes after if it comes off nicely. And what I found with pulling the paint skins off is that it's really shiny and oftentimes quite beautiful, uh, the underside of the paint that you peel off. And it's kind of fun and addicting pulling the paint off. but. Um, it's so pretty and so interesting to me that I thought it would be really fun to try and create an art piece with it. So I'm going to show you what um, one of my palettes looks like when it's all covered with paint and I've used it a lot. <laughs> so this is, like I mentioned, just a canvas with the plastic still on it and it makes it easy to peel it up. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like as I peel it off. I don't think it's going to come off in one piece, doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to be using uh, the following adhesive here. This is a Mod Podge uh, multi-purpose craft glue, water-based, and I'm going to be applying this to my canvas and using that to paint to, for my paint skins to stick to. Um, it's a rainy day outside and I just wanted to do something kind of cozy and fun and share it with you all. So before we get started with this, I want to thank you guys so much for all your support here. I love um, knowing that I have an audience out there that appreciates my videos, my tutorials, and that um, you guys um, pick up inspiration from them and that you're learning from these videos. It means a lot to me. And that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So I want to take this canvas out of my easel here in its place. And I'm just going to start peeling. And like I mentioned, it doesn't have to come off in one solid sheet. I don't need to for what I'm using it for. If it does, that's kind of cool too. But I'm just going to start pulling this off. This is a great way to recycle the paint that you don't use that's left on your palettes as well. You can make art out of what you think might be junk. I know artists that create paint pours have a lot of leftover paint and they have paint skins they use afterwards. So if you guys want to learn more about what you can do with your dried paint or paint skins, you might want to check that out because you can make jewelry and lots of different crafts out of it. But I want to do something kind of abstract with an art piece or painting. I'm probably going to incorporate some, some actual wet paint into this. So see what the color is on top here. It's going to be different underneath because I have layers and layers of color mixing, paint mixing um, from multiple paintings that I've done. So there's lots going on and lots built up on here and it's always exciting pulling it back like this because you never know what you're going to get. In fact, sometimes it's prettier on the outside than it is on the inside or the underside. What I also want to mention right off the bat is Look how kind of matte it looks, almost like velvet or suede. And then underneath, look at how shiny it is. I don't know why that is. If you guys know, leave it in the comments below, but I don't know why it would be this finish on the outside and a high gloss finish underneath.
sometimes when I come in my studio and I kind of, once in a while, not very often, because I really do have uh, quite a, a busy creative mind and I have lots of ideas, but sometimes I get a creative block where I really feel the urge to paint something, but I don't know what I'm, I, I really can't focus and I don't know what I want to quite do, but I'll come in and I'll do this because I've got a lot of um, paint palettes laying around. And I notice that when I start doing this, not only is it kind of relaxing and satisfying, I start to see images take shape on the pattern and the colors can be really exciting and inspiring and doing something as little as this can give me ideas. Kind of reminds me of fruit leather. So see what it looks like here? Maybe this is gonna come off in one piece. Look at how gorgeous that is. I don't know how many paintings I've done with this one palette and all these layers, but I'm gonna make one painting using all of this. I am so surprised that I was able to get one full sheet, one big paint skin out of that. And there's so much going on here. This, ex this especially down here excites me. And this up here, the pastel colors and then these intense like indigo blues and over top of the red. You've got some purple in there happening. Just the layers of the transparent paints together create different, it's like a, they're filtering. So you've got lots of different colors. Okay, so now that I've got this tightly, firmly set in here, I'm gonna give my Mod Podge a good shake. I've just got a few sponges here. You can also use a paintbrush. Make sure that you remember to rinse it out with warm water and some mild dish soap. I personally like to use Dawn dish soap. And I'm just gonna start squeezing this, squeezing some out over the top. And then take my little sponge here. And evenly spread this around. It will dry pretty quickly. So I'm thinking some of these lighter pieces would look really pretty on the top. And I'm just gonna start to tear. You can use a little knife if you want, scissors, whatever you want. What I like about tearing though, is that you get more of a natural bumpy look. So I think I'll go ahead and add this right here. This kind of reminds me of um, some of my gold leaf paintings and creations. This is a little bit easier to handle than gold leaf. So you just wanna kind of push out. I'm just gonna lift up here and see, yeah, there's some thicker. It might be a little bumpy because of the paint that's underneath. Maybe there were some thicker, lumpier areas on your paint palette. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some more of my glue and I'm just gonna go over top. like um, the pink in here so I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of these thicker crusty pieces for now I don't know if I'm gonna use them I'm just gonna set them to the side I might use them later on um, but yeah I just think this is really pretty and I think I'm gonna add it right hmm, maybe right here
And I don't actually have enough glue, as you can see right here, so I'm just going to go over that. Get a little bit more here. You can apply this directly on your applicator and to the canvas as well. So yeah, I do find it very much like fruit leather or fruit roll-ups where if the two pieces touch, in fact, fruit roll-ups might even be easier to pull apart again. These really, once kind of folded together, it's more like cling wrap. So you might want to be a little more careful if there's a certain color or piece area that you really like. So I want to put this here. I'll move it up just a little bit. I just tore that little piece off. Again, I'm pulling it because I like the natural edges I get that are a little bumpy, a little crooked. Now, if you want to be more exact with a shape, say you have a certain thing that you're painting and you want to cover buildings or, you know, like a certain shape, a, a, a certain object, then maybe you want to use some scissors or a little knife. So I'm just going along here. I'm really not thinking this through, planning anything out. This is intuitive. I'm just breaking pieces off and adding them. I find it easier to do this and come in later and create something out of it than to try and plan it right now. This is definitely gonna be a bumpy piece when it's all finished. I'm going to add a few more pieces and then I'm going to just go for it. So yeah, you have two sides to choose from. The matte finish side and then the underside that is really shiny. It just dries so fast. There we go. Okay, I'm going to start applying a few colors to my palette. I'm going to be using some white at some point, I'm sure. Just add a little bit right here. A little bit of bright aqua green light olive green hooker's green hue permanent phthalo turquoise okay i'm going to pull out some of my luminous ones we've got a luminous red i'm not sure how i'm gonna be incorporating these colors um i guess we'll find out i am just Choosing colors that speak to me right now. Luminous Violet. Uh, some Cadmium Yellow Light. Uh, let's add a little bit right there. Oh, I've got a beautiful Luminous Orange too. I'm going to use my long filbert brush. This is a number 10, in case you guys are curious. And I'm going to just add a little bit of water to my brush and then dry off any drips. I'm going to start with a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to go right here, partially over. I'm 
put a little yellow in there and maybe some yellow in here as well so you bring it over top of that turquoise or part of those other colors and bring some in here I'm going to add a little bit down below as well in case I add a little pond or there's flowing river or a little lake down here something take a little bit more white soften that Now, feel the need to pick up some of this orange and start coming in the side here. So I'm not actually painting anything yet. I'm just creating a background. And then I'm going to start adding maybe trees, maybe mountains. I've been painting a lot of mountains lately, so I might do that. And I'm going to come in here with a little bit of this light peach. And see right, right where the pink meets the red in there? I'm going to add a little bit more of this orange here over both. I'm going to bring it around here. And then some neon red. I'm going to mix a little bit of neon red with my orange and my yellow. We'll get a really pretty color as well. I'm going to go around the side here. Pull a little off the top, a little from around the side. So I'm sharing my steps with you guys, but of course it's going to be impossible to have the same outcome as me unless you have a similar paint skin. <laughs> um, you can definitely get some ideas from this and maybe you're just here to see what happens. And if I can make something out of this, I'm going to take a little bit more red and just go over this area here. See how you can bring it over top and create another color? This is luminous and it's like transparent, so it creates kind of a filter when applied over another color. It's another reason why these paints are so much fun to use. I'm gonna add a little bit down here in the water and adding a little bit of water to my brush. Mix up a little red with my peach. And then I'm going to come right in here. Twisting and moving my brush around. We've got some little holes 
where the paint skin tore. Come in here and add some more red. I'm definitely feeling red today. It's this powerful color. I don't know if I'm feeling powerful, but it's just exciting to me. I like using reds. Okay, I'll rinse my brush out now and I'm going to start coming in with a little bit of uh, phthalo turquoise. Add a little bit of white. And I'm just going to brush over the top here. That edge is a little pliable. up a little bit more white in here and let's see we've already got a little bit of like turquoise in here with what looks like black It's a funny thing what makes an artist decide to add colors where they do. I can't explain why I do. Um, it's definitely just like a personal intuitive thing. I just see it and I know what I want to put there. I don't know why. I just go with it. Just add a little bit more white in here. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow with that blue that's in my brush. Add a little bit in here. Got a little bit of water on my brush. release that paint because I've still got quite a bit of paint in my brush but just by picking up a little bit of water you can help release it I'm going to gradiate a little bit here so just have it a little bit more saturated darker here on the edge so apply a little bit more paint less water shorter brush strokes okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out thoroughly dry it off and this color here, another favorite of mine. I have a lot of favorites, but I mean, just look at that color. I'm gonna come right in here, filter over that. Pick up a little bit of white. little stipple, bringing some height up here. And I think I'm going to bring some, a little bit of blue. Let's take our phthalo turquoise and our violet. Mix those colors up. I'm going to just pick a little bit of red without rinsing my brush off. Pull those two colors together. A little bit more violet in here. That makes a nice color. Got a little bit right down in here. A little bit more of the 
yellow turquoise. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of green with my phthalo and I'm gonna come down in here. Oh, let's get a little bit more on there. I'm gonna sneak in here. I see some waterfalls starting to take shape. A little bit more of the salo turquoise. Go around the edges here. Take some violet now without rinsing my brush out. I've got those colors still in there. A little more violet. Some red. So just all these colors coming out now. Wow, this is starting to look like a mountain to me. That's exciting. Mixing up my violet and my phthalo together. I'm gonna come in here and add some shadows. And maybe we'll have a mountain here as well. Let's see what we can do here. Let's just see. Nice dark outline here. Take a little bit of water, a little bit of white, and bit like that. This makes a really pretty shade of purple. I'm just going to drag and sweep my brush around. Now I like that color so much, I want to add a little bit down in the water. I'm just going to wiggle out. Rinse my brush out. I'm going to take a little bit more white and the orange, make that really pretty peach color. And right in here where we already have a little bit of that, I'm going to just exaggerate that more right next to the purples and the yellows. Take a little bit of yellow and go over top of this area here. I'm 
I'll take a little bit of white with my blue, a little bit of violet in there. So this is going to be, see, a little bit darker. Then the other shade. The other shade has a little bit more white in it. Whoops. Picked up a little bit of yellow. I don't want any yellow for this step. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and violet again. I'm just going to come inside here. I really like the teal and the dark base within that. But I want to add a little bit more white and violet in here as well. And Create some clouds. Okay, a little bit more white again. And I'm just gently wisping up on using the side of my brush and adding these little cir half circles. See, the colors that we have underneath what I'm painting over are very important for creating the finished color and outcome. Like the red, this teal, turquoise color, all of it helps to create the final piece. Okay, I'm going to leave the sky for a bit and... I want to start adding, I'm going to be using a little mop brush and I'm going to start adding some bushes and trees. I've got some small mop brushes here somewhere. There's one right here. My One of my favorite mini mop brushes. These are actually um, makeup brushes. I love to use them and they don't shed. And I think they were, like I got a set of them under $20. Not sure if they still have them. I just got them online but um, I'm not going to use any water for this step I'm going to just tap into my uh, turquoise my green to make a deep dark shade here and I'm going to start adding some bushes around where I want my waterfalls to be. So I want to create little taps and dabs like this for bushes and trees. Now for the trees, you can gently pull and flick up like this or up and down at the base of part way down the mountain, right? Well, you can start to see the trees and here I feel like I want to add some yellow and the olive green. So I'm just going to lightly flick up and down and bring a little bit up here as well. I'm going to continue along here. All these colors play a role. Add 
a little half circle here, one here, start creating some rocks. You can use a filbert brush for this as well, or I'm gonna even add a little bit of red in here. Um, a round brush, a flat brush, just apply the same technique. So light pressure, and then gently push for some width, shorter, less pressure for some smaller ones. I'll just add a little base down here. The water's edge, a little bit of a shadow. I'll make this one a little bit bigger. And there's something's telling me to just continue going up the side here with that blue and green. And there is a hint of red in there too. And I'm gonna go over to one of my smallest filbert brushes. This one is a number four, in case you're curious. And I'm gonna start coming in with um, some, let's see, what do I wanna do first? My trees or my waterfall? I think I'll add some of my greens here together. And I'll start adding a little bit, a few little taps here. They may or may not show up. Let's add a little bit of white. The white will make this stand out more and not be, let's take a little bit of yellow, and not be so transparent. Let's add a little tree down here. So we've got some mountains, some waterfalls taking shape, some rocks. When painting trees, you want to have the paint on the end of your brush like this. You can add a little line. I always like to leave a little bit at the top and then go down and just make the branches a little bit bigger gradually. And then I like to come in and add some darker ones here and there. So, you know, maybe let's add one right here. I already see a little line there, so I'm gonna go with that. Let's add one here too. Look at all the hints of the greens coming out. Go add a little bit of white. A little bit of white in here with the blue and the green. And if you want them to be a little more visible, add a little bit of extra light to your trees, then just add a little bit of white. Maybe even a little yellow in there. Change the um, temperature. Remember there are warm and cool shades of every shade, <laughs> every color. I'm gonna take a little bit of white with the yellow. We have a few little indications of trees here. Now, as these trees are getting higher up the mountain, they're gonna be a little bit less detailed. So 
So I'm going to do these a little bit more carefree. Little pulls and flicks and taps. And I just want to bring over a little bit of this bright olive green in here. Maybe a little over the rocks. Have some moss covered rocks. Now I've got a little dagger brush here. Dagger striper brush, a quarter inch. I love using these trees for waterfalls, and I'll show you why and how wonderful they work. You want to get your brush a little wet first. And then I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of white on the end of the brush, and I'm going to use the point. I think I'll just have maybe the water is coming down here, and we're just going to wiggle and then Pull and drop like that. Turn. Have the point end, pointy end to the left and pull. So you can change the direction of your waterfalls. And then we can have some spilling over the side here. Add a little bit of phthalo turquoise and maybe have some coming down here. Now, having recently driven through the beautiful Canadian Rocky Mountains, you really do see all these little waterfalls gracefully coming down the mountains so there could be lots of little creeks in here With the water just spilling over. And they kind of branch out. They really do look like little branches. I'm going to use a little more white here and there. And then a little zigzag side to side. And then maybe we'll have another one coming down in here. I'm 
just rinsing some of that excess paint out of my brush so that my brush doesn't get ruined because the paint will start to dry up here by the ferrule. A little bit more generous with the white. I'm going to take a little bit more of my phthalo turquoise here and go in and around the rocks. Let's take a little bit of that aqua green. a few little ripples in the water, a little bit of movement. How about some yellow, a little bit of turquoise and white. And then a little, just a little hint right in there. Rinsing my brush out. I'm gonna get my dagger, a nice shape here, pointy. I'm gonna add some violet, red, and green. And I'm gonna turn it upside down with a pointy end at the bottom. I'm gonna pull up some tree trunks here. Maybe a few more rocks down here. Leave a little teeny tiny bit of water on my brush. That helps quite a bit. I'm gonna go over that tree. I just wanted to make it stand out a little bit more by adding a tree trunk. And I think I'm going to sneak a big tree in here. Let's take a little bit of the phthalo, red, violet, and green. And I'm going to have this one kind of coming right close to the water's edge here. I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure. Pull, 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 pull. I'm going to go over some of this here, but any little bits of white showing like this in here is snow, like glaciers. Okay, I'm going to use my number 10 filbert brush now. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue and green, a dark green. And I'm going to start right about here and just add some little branches. Tap, tap, tap. I'm going to add some over here as well, and then I'm going to add a few highlights. Oh, we'll start over here. Forgot about these little ones. Now you could use a smaller filbert brush if you want, um, but if you just use a little pressure like this, you can usually still maintain the control and the size that you want. A 
I'm seeing a leaning tree over here. I've got some lines that are on an angle. I love having those, including those trees that are a little leaning. I love them. They add so much character. Right, we've got a few down here as well. See the intense red and violet as an under painting really helps to create some dramatic effects in the painting. I'm going to use another mop brush and I'm going to take a little bit of both of my greens. My brush is dry, like no water, just paint only. And I'm going to add a few little mossy land areas here. Well, it's all land, but just green, more green areas. Okay, I want to add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white and make some of these a little bit brighter. A little bit of this green with that gorgeous red really pops. Complementary colors. Add a little bit of my darker green in here. A little bit in here as well. If you turn your brush and tap up and down like this, you can also make it look like trees. All right, a little bit more yellow and white now. And as we get up a little higher here, and where these really stick out, I'll add a little extra highlight. I'm adding a little scoop and kind of making them look a little swirly. Okay, now for some highlights on the trees here. I'm going to go back over to my number four. Filbert brush and I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and white, maybe a little bit of light olive green in there. And I'm going to add a little tap here and just a little hint. And I'm going to ease into my greens as the tree goes down a little lower. They don't all have to have a ton of highlights on them. Um, but if they don't stand out, 
then you need, you either need a little bit more light or shadow, highlights or shadow. Take a little bit of the aqua turquoise or aqua green. It's nice to have different shades of trees. A little bit more kind of beautiful veil of turquoise here. And then a little bit of white in with that. I'm going to add a little glacier here, a little loop, scoop, loop. A little bit more white, a little bit of the green, aqua green within that. I'm going to add a little hint of that in here as well. pick up some white and I'm going to add it right in here. I think I'm going to add my sun here and have some sun rays coming out. I'm going to add a little bit more pattern to the mountains. I'm going to exaggerate the lines. So let's make that soft fuzzy peach again. Take a little bit of red, red with a white, and I'm going to sweep, sweep. Some violet and white. I do have a little bit of red in here as well. Set a little bit on the rocks here. Little hints of this gorgeous violet here and there. It's such a pretty color, it's hard to stay out of it. <laughs> Rinse my brush out and go back in. The red and the white. For my sun rays, I'm going to use my dagger brush and I'm going to take white and I'm going to start from here. I'm going to pull and get a little bit of water. Because it's kind of bumpy underneath, I'm going to have to work a little bit harder. 
slightly pull. I make the rays a little bit wider on the ends. And have a little bit just sneaking over the edge here. And then I think we can fit one more right here. Now you can add color tint to your whites. Let's take a little bit more of the yellow. Mix it with some white. And you can add a little bit of extra color and glow to your sun. Sun rays aren't always just white. Quite rarely are they just white actually. So it's nice to take those colors and add them down in the water too. So we did at the beginning a little bit of that soft peach. And so I'm just adding a little bit extra down here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of red and add a little bit here. A little bit more of that peachy color. I'm going to come and loop this down a little lower. Add a little bit of red and white in here. And a little bit really close to the sun where the mountain is. The mountain and the sun are kind of just meeting in there. Okay, now I'm going to take some more white go right in this section here come in with a little bit of yellow in between the red and the white a little bit more water so that I can come over here with some more of the sun rays just make them look really soft powdery and transparent now down here I want to add a little bit more white I'm going to take my brush with the end pointy and it down and slightly pull up and then add a few more little drops in the water
Now in here, this is a little bit solid, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of turquoise. I'm gonna add a little bit of red, green, and blue. A little bit more of the red this time. Just underneath these rocks here. Let me know if this is something you guys think you might wanna try, if you have any questions. But I think I'm gonna call this one done. This was um, a fun, fun creative challenge. I'm happy with the end result. And I wanna thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.